<coughs> Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and welcome to Flipper Zero News, where I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the big changes that have come up on the Flipper firmware. So today we're covering the big switch from plugins to applications, uh, as well as the long-awaited implementation of dummy mode. So Flipper plugins have been an integral part of the Flipper ecosystem since I got my Flipper. Uh, and in the past, they were a little bit of a, a kind of an example. You know, I don't think that they intended to use that plugin system forever because it was a bit complex. It came with three example plugins, uh, the Bluetooth remote, which I've done a video on, a music player, very simplified music player uh, that takes advantage of the internal speaker, as well as the snake game, which is a fun little addition. And every computer thing should really come with a game, uh, in my opinion. So those are fun, but they were all examples. Uh, there have been some really cool community additions to the plugin system, uh, or including like Tetris, Flappy Bird, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, one of them even made it into the official firmware, which is the Pico Pass, uh, the Pico Pass plugin. But it was not super conducive or easy to add these on your own. And as a result, the most common way of acquiring these plugins was to switch the firmware completely to a community firmware. But Flipper has finally gotten to readjusting and adding uh, the this cool new feature uh, and they've changed it to the flipper application system uh, now complete with its own dot fap uh, executables nice so we're going to go over here we're going to take a little look at uh, this new option whoops let's go over here uh, we're going to go to applications so they've completely renamed this uh, they've changed it and the first thing we'll notice is that the old plugin setup had a static menu, which is one of the uh, annoying things you had to deal with when it came to adding plugins. Uh, you had to go through the manifest file, add, manually add a menu entry. Now it's changed to a much more dynamic folder system, uh, folder structure, similar to the rest of the Flipper Zero. So you can see we can now organize our various dot fap programs uh, and this is really convenient we can it's a little bit easier to to maneuver and i believe it's going to be drag and drop now uh, this also moves storage off of the internal device and onto the sd card uh, which i believe the initial firmware uh, or the initial plugins had to be stored on the tiny amount of space available on the on the flipper zeros internals now we can move them onto our ssd sd rather I don't think you can plug an SSD into this. Uh, move it to our SD card. <clears throat> this makes for a lot of uh, a much more easy way to adjust the the you know the flipper to our needs on the go, uh, and we can you know add and subtract functionality at will. Now, one of the cool additions to this was going to be the Flipper Aquarium, which is going to be a, a brand new repository that's going to house third-party applications for the Flipper, and uh, yeah, so that's going to that's going to make a, a, a big impact, I think, on, on our ability to change our functionality on the fly uh, to add new stuff. I have in the past said that I'm getting away with a four gig SD card, and I still maintain that that's plenty of space that I have gotten. I have really hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, IR codes of sub gigahertz uh, signals and various things on my flipper, but it only takes up about one gig. However, if we're starting to add programs to our SD card, uh, applications to our SD card, that might start really ramping up. And so now might be the time to, to think about putting a little money aside to upgrade or add uh, a larger storage to your flipper zero. Now the, la the next thing, last thing I wanna talk about is going to be the brand new Flipper Dummy Mode. Now this has been here. If you ever hit up on your Flipper Zero, you'll come to this menu. This is the lock. Uh, you know, if you hit lock, you have to hit uh, you know the back button three times. It'll unlock, so it won't accidentally go off in your pocket. Uh, whoops. Let's go back over here. Uh, here you can set the pin, or you can uh, 
you know, lock using a pin code. Uh, I thought actually I already had mine set, so I'm not quite sure how that's working. Maybe something has changed in the firmware updates, uh, but that allows you to set a pin code. So, you know, if your sibling or teacher or, you know, somebody gets their hands on it that you don't want them to be able to access it, you can have your own pin code comprised of uh, various pressings of the Flipper Zero's buttons. And then we have this dummy mode. And dummy mode has historically always said, you know, this feature has not been implemented. But recently, I've noticed this. Well, what's that? Okay, so now it dumps us back to the, the main animation screen and gives us this new icon, the game mode icon. Uh, and this kind of changes our functionality a little bit. So uh, in the past, if you hit down, or left or right, you would end up in some, some sub menus. I think one of them could be this uh, kind of status page about how what level you are you're on your Flipper Zero, you know, how much experience, the little bar you had. Uh, but now now the, those all left, right, and down all go to this this status page. Uh, and place hitting you know the center button is gonna bring us with snake. Right? And so this basically severely limits the functionality of our Flipper Zero, uh, but in a way that, that makes it appear to be much more like just a small handheld pocket game. Uh, you know, I, I doubt that this is the final form of this. I expect that they're going to create something slightly more Tamagotchi-like. I'm sure you can also uh, manually change what Flipper application gets pulled up when you press the, the, the center button. Uh, there's got to be a way to, to change that in the firmware. Uh, but for right now, it just it defaults to dumping you into Snake, the, the one game that this flipper comes with. Uh, and, and again, this is kind of a mode that was touted since the beginning uh, as a way to keep you from you know, uh, walking around with a, a penetration testing tool in your pocket that very clearly indicated it was a penetration testing tool. So if, uh, you know, again, if, if your teacher or your boss or, you know, an authority of some sort uh, wants to see your device, you can always say, well, that, yeah, this is just this really fun game I have. Now, pressing up does bring you back to this lock, pin, and now Brainiac mode, right? We hit Brainiac mode. It's going to remove the little gaming icon, and we're back to you know the the good old fashioned uh, setup uh, sub menus. But yeah, I mean that's just a cool little I guess the passport. Yeah, that's our passport is what they call it. Uh, that's just a cool little functionality that I, that's been sitting there, uh, you know, unused. And it, it, you know, that, I think they're really finally getting to the point where uh, if you've checked out a lot of the release notes, you'll see that they've made a lot of big advancements to the, the base functionality. Uh, and in fact, if, if you start peeking around at uh, adding manually, you'll see that a lot, a lot, a lot more uh, various uh, types of like sub gigahertz, various types of RFID are, are becoming uh, available now and have kind of gotten their support built into the Flipper Zero. I think that's one of the, the big things that's kind of not as obvious if you're not peeking around for it. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot a lot of the back-end stuff is starting to come together really powerfully. Uh, and so now they, get, they have time to start adding and, and tweaking some of these maybe uh, more, you know, kind of fun, not must-haves, but conveniences uh, so now we have our, our new application menu uh, like I said you know we can go around and we can even play snake the old-fashioned way if you want to uh, I believe that somebody actually added a little piece of code in here so playing snake does give you a small bump to your flipper uh, experience level or whatever I mean frankly that that's all kind of a, of a hacky joke right now as well because it's it's very easy to change that and to, to get access to all the uh, the animations that come along with your success as a Flipper user. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out today. Hopefully I can make this a new segment on Rad Linux or you know on this channel. And uh, 
maybe I can I can keep up because I'll keep us up to date on some of the the changes that are happening to the Flipper firmware to the Flipper hardware as you know things like the Flipper One come out in hopefully a while. Hopefully they're not focusing on that too hard right now. Uh, but yeah, and, and you know some of the various things that are surrounding the Flipper Zero. So if you like what you see, please say something in the comments. If you hate it, say something as well. I'd like to have your input and your feedback on this. I'm not the most knowledgeable person, but I do love my Flipper Zero, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, you know, I might have to do an update video to is the Flip Zero, Flipper Zero right for you? Uh, because I, I've learned a lot since getting that, and I, I think there's a, a lot more to this device. Than I had initially realized, and a lot more mani uh, kind of malleability. There's a lot, a lot more you can do with it, and uh, you know it's a really good, fun starting base to to learn even basic things about programming, uh, you know, basic things about just the world around us. So, again, thanks for hanging out. I'm Rad Linux, and I'll see you around.